hi everyone um welcome back to another um tutorial from the lovely beautiful free download from rita berman to um celebrate her new book um minorizer dirk asian and uh, this video i did um yesterday well it was released yesterday um so you can catch up with that if you've missed it on my channel but uh, today we're going to be doing this second picture so i'll come in a bit closer we can have a little look at it now today I'm going to approach it in a slightly different way. Yesterday I did the background last. Gosh, that was a big bang. Sorry, that's the door going. Um, today I'm going to do the background first. Um, that's because these little flowers here, um, I'm going to do in white um, pen. So I thought if I do the background, I need to do the background underneath them first. I had thought about doing it pink. But this looks like pink cherry blossom to me and it's sky, I think. And also um, we've got pink over here, so we do something a little bit different. I'm just going to start actually with doing a layer of pink. I've got a lovely new pencil. Look how long that is. Um, a light thalo blue. And I'm going to do the whole of the background. And then um, I may add some different shades. Now I want to have quite a thick layer of colour because when we start to add white and we've got a bit of a problem here because we're overlapping the edge of the page hmm anyway we'll cross that bridge when we come to it um, when we've got white we need it to show up and if we do quite a pastel colour or a very light layer obviously this is quite a light blue but I'm trying to layer it up so that the white will show over it if we leave too much I've just gone right over that branch oh anyway <laughs> if we um if we leave too much um I'm just gonna erase that um, if we leave too much white paper then the white pen won't show up I'm just erasing a big area it, uh, this paper erases nicely as to polychromos um, obviously it's not perfect but you can see that's mainly gone now so really layer it up or else um, if there's too much white paper showing through you just won't see the white pen at all I know a lot of people struggle with white pen. They say, I've tried it, it doesn't show, it doesn't work, my pen doesn't work. Now, there are some white pens out there that just don't work. I have to admit that's true. But quite often with the um, white pens, it's because you're trying to put them on top of a really thin layer of pencil. It's not going to show up. So uh, it's just a matter of uh, layering it up a bit. So I'm being quite heavy handed, which I'm not, I normally try not to be. Um, if you are using a different brand of pencils, you might find it a little bit easier and quicker than I am. Polychromos aren't really designed for going down hard. It's supposed to layer them up gently. But, you know, I just want a heavy layer, so that's what I'm doing today with this one. And you'll see, hopefully, it will work. <laughs> As I said, I'm a little bit worried about these overlapping bits. What I might do is leave the overlapping bits black. And uh, just, yeah, I've just got to... We'll find a way. Um, it's a it's a very pretty picture. We've got the um, the uh, lanterns and uh, the lovely blossom and this down at the bottom, which I'm going to colour as if they were hills. That's what I um, interpret them as. Um, I assume there are lots of hills in Asia. Why wouldn't there be? It's certainly volcanoes, isn't there? And mountains. So I see there. But I'm probably going to do them as sort of like green. I think it'll be a bit more calming rather than sort of grey mountainous. Just nice pretty green colour. So it'll go nicely with this light blue and the, um, orange, the uh, cherry blossom. Which won't be orange as my mouth wanted to say. Pink. <laughs> I'm really excited today. Um, actually I'm recording this just after I recorded that one. Although it's going out the next day. And uh, I was excited yesterday and I still, um, when I recorded that, and I still am now. And I still can't tell you why. So uh, it's, uh, it's, it's really good. You'll find out. Um, I will announce it on my Facebook page as soon as it happens, probably. And there'll be a YouTube. Um, it will be mentioned in YouTube. So there you go. So there's your clue. <laughs> It's not a good clue, is it? So it's not something personal, it's something to do with colouring. There's your clue. <laughs> so 
sorry. It's really rubbish, isn't it? <laughs> oh well. I shall tease you and tease you a bit longer. But I hope that you've all had some excitement. So apart from that excitement that I'm not going to talk about, I've had other excitement today as well, which I will talk about. It rained. I know. I know. How exciting. Um, when I was a child, when it rained in an English summer, it's like, oh, it rains every day. But this summer has been such a hot heat wave and we've had, it was like 36 degrees, I think, forecast just. I'm not sure it got quite that hot. And I turned into a right grumpy madam. It's, it's so hot. My husband did as well. He had a right old grump. It's just horrible. You know, everyone was like, ugh. But today it's much cooler and it rained. Really big, heavy, rainy, you know, um, big splatty rain. <laughs> I, don't, I hope you know what I mean. Which was lovely and refreshing. The air smelled beautiful and uh, it is just like the earth sighed with relief. It was just amazing. It didn't last, it wasn't huge amounts, but I don't think the ground can take huge amounts. I think if we had masses of rain in one go, that would be a disaster because the ground's so dry. But little bits just to start absorbing in and uh, that was great so that was exciting and uh, the temperature is supposed to go down and down from now on which is uh, really nice um, I know there are a lot of people that really like a lovely um, sunny weather but it was getting a bit silly really getting far too hot um, I think even people I know that like the sun were getting a bit sick of it not sick of the sun but sick of the really hot temperatures it did go very humid though before it rained but it has cleared now which is nice so uh, actually i was in town and it was humid and um when i got home it wasn't and because um where we live is slightly out of town and there are more trees i think the trees really help reduce the humidity because they give off i read somewhere i don't know if it's true you know how you read these things and you think oh, i wonder if that's true um that trees give off water from their leaves and so when you stand under a tree not only is it shady but you're actually getting some moisture which is why it feels so lovely shading under a tree so as i said i don't know if it's true but it sounds good doesn't it <laughs> and uh, my son was telling me how trees are so good for the environment in so many different ways um long term and short term how uh, they um, give obviously absorb CO2 and um, stop soil erosion and help to prevent acid rain and, us, and give just generally cool and shade when it's hot so all good things and I said we should plant some in our garden he gave me a look our garden is tiny if we planted any trees the roots would be right under our house and our house would fall down so uh, no <laughs> But um, yeah, we ought to have a few more plants, just generally, even grass is good, isn't it? Okay, so I've done a sort of layer. I'm going to try and make sure that I'm happy with how heavy it is. Now, I know the background of the other one. I, I varied the colour. I haven't done that on this one. I just want to show you something a little bit different. Now, you could um, do this in pen if you wanted. Um, I'm sure a Posca pen would work absolutely fine. The only problem with a paint pen is that it covers the print. It's not see-through. So all these pretty lines from the um, lanterns and things, and all these lines would just disappear. So it's easier to have a... You can use a felt tip or a water-based marker. They would probably be okay. If you're not sure, you can experiment. Up here, you know, you've got some words. You could colour over those. Um, and see if they show through or what I would do is um is probably get a scrap piece of paper write on it and color over the writing and see if it shows up because I wouldn't want to do some random coloring on my printout but uh, yeah it's up to you so uh, yeah, I mean you could color in that circle with a felt pen and just see if the words still show up I'm sure they would if it's a water-based marker as I said I don't really know much about alcohol-based markers I think they're a bit more like paint but um, I don't have any because I get too scared of them bleeding through the page. So And the smell. I think they smell. Uh, I'm lying, actually. I do have some um, ones I think are alcohol-based, which are metallic markers. And, you know, they smell. Right. I am finished fiddly-faddling now, I think. Right. 
let's do this bit of tree. Now it doesn't go all the way down here, it just stops here, so we've just got this little bit. Um, what sort of colour? Should we go for a walnut brown, I think, to start with? Here he is. I didn't say that I'm using polychromos. I'm really sorry for anyone who's trying to... is confused. Um, it does say in the description of the video, um, but I'm sorry. I should have let you know. But I'm going to use polychromos on all of these um, pictures. I think it's sometimes it's easier if the whole series or the whole page or whatever is done with the same one. Sometimes I don't do that. I vary it and do a different one for each pe picture. But also, um, there's quite a lot of little detail, like this bit that I'm just doing here. So um, it's nice to have a pencil that can hold its um, a sharp um, tip. Oops, I broke the tip then. So I'm just taking that brown a little bit further in, but lightly. And we're going to do a lighter brown in the centre of the branch. I think it's a branch rather than a trunk, isn't it? So I'm just, just softening those edges. And then we'll go for what what will work. I'm thinking this one looks good. Let me use that on the last one. Let's use something different. This is the yes Van Dyke Brown. I'm finding it hard to show you the name. And I know my lamp is shining off it. I've actually got natural light today for a change because the sun isn't. It's just coming out. Mm, the sun wasn't shining, so I didn't have to shut the blind. It's just coming out now, so I hope it's going to be okay. It's because I'm talking about it. I shall have to stop talking um, about it, and it might go away. There we go. That's quite dark. I think it looks quite good against the blue. Now, I'm going to do the cherry blossom next, because I know what I'm doing with that, and I haven't decided about everything on the page. Um, should I use two colours? Yeah. Now I think the centres of the cherry blossom is often a little bit darker than the rest. So I'm going to use this um, middle purple pink for the sort of centres. These are the ones I'm doing as cherry blossom. I'm leaving the white bits on there till last so I don't smudge it. So I'm just, I mean you don't have to do this as cherry blossom but for me that's what it looks like. So I'm doing the centre darker and then lighter. I remember when I was a child, we used to walk down a lovely street. Um, well, the street wasn't that lovely, to be honest, but it was tree-lined. And um, it had, all the trees were cherry blossom trees. Well, they had grew cherries, but they weren't edible cherries. And they were so pretty. And often if it had been windy, um, there would be little tiny bits, branches of blossom on the floor. And if they look clean and fresh, um, this is the... Um, like magenta. It's really hard to read, isn't it? And I'm just going to lighten it all the way to the end of each one to try and make it lighter on the tip of the petal. And so if there were any um, nice ones, I would pick them up, give them to my mum. Or um, we sometimes visiting my aunt, or normally visiting my aunt, so I'd give, her, give them to her. And she would find a little teacup or jug and put some water in and display it. She probably chucked it out as soon as I left. It's probably covered in black fly or something. <laughs> oh. It's funny, isn't it, how kind children. Oh, that's lovely, thank you. If your friend gave you it, you go, ugh. Where's that been? On the street. How many people have stepped on that? <laughs> but actually, there's one um, a cherry blossom tree in our street can see it from my front window which is really lovely it doesn't last long enough that's the only thing the blossom doesn't last so uh, it's uh, it's you really have to be there exactly the right time it's called Sakura isn't it in um, in Japanese I think and um, hence the Sakura pens it's called um, Sakura that means cherry blossom which is really Interesting name for a brand, isn't it? It's really lovely. But they have the season there, don't they, where you can go and visit and look at all the trees. It sounds lovely. But uh, not really um, interested in travelling. Now, I've done a bit. I've been to the Netherlands and I'm just checking for petals. 
I'm just going to make them a little bit darker. I actually used the um, used the middle purple pink just to make the the ends of the petals a bit darker. It's better. Um, yeah, Spain, Netherlands, America, Australia. I feel like I've done a lot of travelling. I don't really feel like I need to do any more. Um, the leaves. I'm going to keep them quite pale. I think if I do them too dark, they might jump out, and uh, sort of. We want the, the blossom to shine. So I'm going to use this grass queen, which is quite a pale one. I might change my mind once it goes down, but we'll see how it looks. So yeah, I went to America and we did um, California, um, Grand Canyon, Vegas, Bryce Canyon, Zion National Park, Sedona, that sort of area. Yeah, Arizona, and that was fun. And uh, Australia was in Perth, so we did, you know, Kings Park, and we also travelled to York, which I loved, um, Albany, um, Kalgoorlie, which was really great fun. I don't know if I would be able to do it now, going down a, a, coal, a gold mine, coal mine, no, gold. <laughs> leaf green but it was really fun learning about the gold and things I'm gonna do these I'm gonna do them quite lightly because I just want it to look light and pretty so I'm gonna do them all with this with just a light layer and then I shall come back and just put a little bit of extra color in but I just as I say I want it just to look light and pretty I really want these to shine out so if I make this too dark, it will come forward. So I'm just going to put a little bit of extra colour where they're overlapping. There, maybe a little bit on this edge. Uh, a little bit there, around the edge. As I say, just where they're overlapping a bit. Like that. Just to add a little bit of interest. But... As I say, I don't want them standing out, so I'm really happy with them just sitting there. It sets the scene without it jumping out at us. And now we've got our lovely lanterns to do. Now, I'm thinking we want to keep nice, pretty shades. Um, I'm contemplating doing them all different shades of purple. But I think that might be a little bit too samey. Ooh, decisions, decisions. I shall start with the lightest purple and then I shall decide. This is number 138. Um, it is called Violet. Okay, I'm saying purple, but this is the Violet. Um, I think we'll just do this one. Something I've just noticed about this one is with this loop and top, I think inside that loop it should be blue. I think that's... and there. So I'm just going to colour that in. I'm sorry I missed that out before. But it doesn't hurt. I'll just pop it in. I'll just fiddle and faddle a bit. As you do. <laughs> right. So violet. Um, this one. I'm just going to sharpen. It's such a teeny pencil. There's plenty of life left in it yet though. So I'm just going to start with this little tiny top bit. And the little bottom bit. And I'll show you. I like to do this. These with a the dark bit there and light towards the center like that and then this one's marked out for us with a big dark shadowy bit there so it makes it nice and easy for us now with the um the lantern itself we want to make it look spherical so the trick is to make it darker all the way around the edge and then lighter in the middle now you could um, make it look like it's lit by putting a sort of yellowy glow in the middle. I have done that in a picture before. I'm trying to remember if it's a tutorial. Mm, I've only done a thousand plus tutorials. I'm sure I can remember. Mm, I've no idea. <laughs> so, uh, so look, see how I'm fading this here? You could then get your yellow in here, do a hard bit here and fade it out into the purple. But I'm not. I'm just going to leave it pale. Because I think this is daylight. I don't know if they would even be on. So I'm quite happy. And I just want them to look pastely. 
um, pastel colours sort of well not with a yellow it's just not quite in the spirit of what I was trying to do with this picture really it's hard to explain I hope you know what I mean okay so that's quite pale I think that's okay I'm going to leave it for now and do the other two and then decide if I want it a little bit darker so it's there by me so I can decide so I'm in this front one I'm going to do with a darker colour um, I think I'm going to use the mauve this is my mauve it's very little and uh, it's a sort of much darker shade of purple so we'll go in here you can see it's darker I'm not going to layer it up all over this dark but just top and bottom you see Rita's only marked a shadow on that side but I'm going to make it darker on this side as well and just make it lighter in the middle like that and then around the edge I'm getting thirsty my husband made me a cup of tea a coffee I mean which I can't drink because I'm it's next door but um, I daren't put it on my desk when I'm recording can you imagine I'm such a klutz clumsy I would just knock it over <laughs> So as I'm going round, I'm doing less layers and trying to press a little bit more lightly on the pencil. I know it can be quite difficult. If you find that too tricky, just um, use a couple of shades. So use a lighter one in the middle. But what you can do, a trick as well, is to go over the whole thing in a light layer. I'll show you on the next one. So I'm now just going to try and help that look a little better by tidying it up really I still want to make sure it's quite pale in the middle I'm beginning to think it's looking very nice we've got these bits same colour pink I know we'll do the tassel in this colour so this is whoops, still the mauve so I think I'll fade it down a bit and then maybe draw in those lines a bit that are there. There we go. And maybe make this little thing here in a dark pink. Um, this colour is rather nice. Um, magenta. It's like a bead, isn't it? So I'm going to try and make it shine. Uh. <laughs> Will you work? No. <laughs> Oh, that never happens with polychromos, does it, normally? It's such a reliable pencil. A little more. Right, here we go. Hang on, let me just brush that off. There we go. So I'm trying to do a hard layer on each side and then just bring a little bit in and leave a white bit so it looks shiny. I think that's worked. Okay, let's move away from that naughty magenta. And my last purpley colour oops, ooh, <laughs> wants to jump on the floor. It's the manganese violet. I really like this colour. So again with this top bit, a bit dark on the edges. And then lighten it up as we go towards the middle. Like that, and the same underneath. Um, oh, it's a train. I don't know if you can hear that. <laughs> My son was doing a live yesterday and the train went by and I heard him say, I don't know if you can hear it. It was so loud. And he's on the he's on the wrong side of the house for the train. So he had all the doors and windows open. I realise there's a motif. I'm going to deal with that in a minute. I'm thinking that if the lantern is on, and even if it isn't, it would might be silhouetted or printed in black. So I'm going to do it in black, is my idea. I'm just going to tidy this round. Oh, Rita has really treated us, hasn't she, with this lovely page. Such pretty pictures. But do make sure that you save the, the PDF, because even if you haven't got a printer at the moment, and you can't download it, make sure you save it, because it will disappear. Um, what Rita does with these is she only leaves them available until the book comes out and then it's gone. So this is my Posca. Sorry, I've taken the lid off already. It's a PC1MR and white. 
and we're going to start from the top and work through with some white detailing. So we're going to do these blossoms and I'm not worrying too much about sticking exactly with Rita's lines. I'm just I'm just doing it a bit more randomly because I know I I'm so um I'm not very good at um hang on at sort of my hand isn't very steady at sticking with lines so I'm just doing my own thing and we'll see some of Rita's dark lines showing through and I think that's perfect. It looks quite grey this this white to my eye but I'm not going to worry you can always go over and over it a few times if you want to remember I said I was going to leave it black as it overhangs the page and I am definitely going to do that I'm just going to add a few more and go around all of them adding a little more I don't know why it looks grey Maybe the black ink turns it grey. Might be my printer. There we go. I haven't done those. I said I was going to. There's a dot there. I'm just going to colour it in. Now underneath these there are lines and things. I'm going to colour those in white. But I am just going to do that dragonfly. i am decided not to do it black. I'm going to do it mauve. Just because I think black might be a bit too dark. For this light picture, so I'm going to do them move, and it's still quite dark, and they'll show up. Could do them white, but I don't think it'll quite work because of the fading colour. Okay, so back to the white, and I'm going to do these bits under here. Now, pen takes confidence, and I'm okay with it. I'm like, oh, if I go out of the lines or it looks a bit odd, I'm just going to go with it. But I know it's tricky. If you're not happy with using it, then don't. Just use a pencil. You can't obviously do white with a pencil, but you could use a different colour. You know. But it all just takes practice. Um, got some more dots. Um, now you could go over these lines and dots on the lanterns and I'm thinking about it but I think I'm going to leave it. But I'm going to go back over the top of some of these just because they look grey. I really don't know why but you can see what, how they the white does show up on top of the blue pencil which I'm pleased about because I was going on about making sure it was thick enough and just hoping that I was doing it thick enough. <laughs> There we go. I'm going to leave that. I could just keep fiddling with it forever. But uh, there we go. I'm quite happy with that one. It's such a pretty picture. I felt such pressure to make it look really nice. And I'm, I'm happy. So that's good. Tomorrow we've got an interesting one. Look. Food. Noodles and cherries, I think that is. That's how I'm going to do it anyway. So that'll be fun. And then we're going to miss out the big one, I suspect, and do a few of the little ones. But we'll see. I uh, will see what happens. But uh, that's today. So thank you for joining me. Um, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do. You can just click and then click subscribe under the video. And then if you click the little bell, you can show how much, how many notifications you want to be set. And you can sort of opt out or have lots. And so it shouldn't be too disturbing to subscribe. And it means that you're, um, you'll get to see other videos that I've done and show your support for my channel, which always means so much. Um, so that's really lovely and thank you to everyone that already has it does really mean a lot so there we go have a really lovely day thank you so much for watching and happy colouring <laughs>